Hello and welcome to another LEGO Train Mock Showcase video. This is the fantasy design for the Hogwarts Express. So this is based on the design as seen on the cover of the Philosopher's Stone. And when I saw that for the first time I thought, yeah, I need to make that. But I got the parts, I was all excited, but I kind of just chickened out. Some of the parts were used elsewhere. I made the standard Alton Hall class design and I thought, you know what, this is, you know, this is his own thing. Maybe one day. Well, that day is today, and honestly, I'm so glad I've got this built because it's so different. Most of the exciting stuff is happening here at the front. The running board design is slightly different using some sideways building methods, as well as some curved bricks to get to that special look. Now, this does have smoke deflectors technically in use of these bat wings here, and on the actual design, it is, it looks like a wing, but I wasn't too sure how to go about it. I saw another design online where somebody used a bunch of pipe pieces, and it did look good, but I thought, nah, it's kind of chunky as well, I'm not too big of a fan of that. Doesn't mean it doesn't work, but the wing design here is something I ultimately prefer. In front of the smoke box door is a small golden statue, I think it's a pig with wings? But the only way to replicate that with Lego is to use this small golden dragon piece. Never mind having the lampines there to put lights on, nah, let's have a golden dragon, that's way cooler. Some of the elements around the cylinders, the wheels, and the running board have been changed to satisfy this being a castle class. Now in real life, or at least for the movies, the Hogwarts Express is represented with a Great Western Hall class. And I saw a video of someone comparing a castle and a hall, like what would be a better locomotive for this engine? This is called Hogwarts Castle after all, so would a castle class look good? There were very few visual changes and I thought to myself, well, I've brought all these models to eight studs wide, let's make them more of a change and make this a castle class. But then it turned into what you see here. But there are a few elements that kind of represent the castle class anyways, most notably the pipe that is above the cylinder and where the cylinder itself is located. I think this looks good anyways because it's nice to have a bit of a change, but ultimately the positioning of it all here works good with this design. I think my favourite design feature of this locomotive are all of these spikes along the top, as if it's got some kind of spine to it. Kind of creepy in a way, but as a visual representation of this being a fantasy locomotive, that's really cool. Again, it's just so different to anything I've ever seen or built before. And it just makes it stand out all the more. You know, there's massive bat wings for smoke deflectors. It's got a dragon on the front. It has a spine along the top of the boiler. Come on, that's cool. Now to shift focus on the tender, there really isn't that much to go over. The overall shape is the same as to how it was at seven studs wide. It's just one stud wider now because I've built this locomotive to have an eight wide basis. There are a few golden details here and there, and also these dragon pieces for the kind of hand guards. After a bit of back and forth to try and get this to work, I've ultimately gone with what you see here. That way there's no collision, there's no way this thing can bump off the tracks, and it was a bit frustrating to kind of see that happen. Having the connection bar between the tender and the boiler be one stud longer was just not going to work, so as an ultimate compromise I have what we see here. The biggest change to the tender is the fact that I'm going 8 wide, I can get some more details around the axle boxes for the tender. So, these wheels are thin wheels from Breckland Brakes, and these are just incredible. It's just so convenient to have larger wheels on a tender that aren't so bulky, which means I can get all the axle box details correct and not have them stick out wider than the tender is itself. So yes, it's not the most complicated design in the world, but it's just a better visual representation for what is supposed to be there compared to all the other details I had designed in the past. Once again, the thin wheels from Breckland Brakes, I strongly recommend getting some. I don't know how many versions of the Hogwarts Express I have built over the years, but there is no doubt in my mind the fact that this is a custom sort of fantasy design, this is my favourite. I remember thinking back to all the custom design engines I used to build back in the day, and they all had these weird details to them, some of them were steampunk, some of them were giants, and this does have some kind of basis because the locomotive does have a somewhat realistic shape, it's just got all these flamboyant details, the dragon, the spine, the wings, it's just so much more than just a regular train. And because it's Harry Potter focused, it all makes sense. So yeah, this has all of a sudden become one of my new favourite builds, just because I've had more fun building this than any other real engine I've had in a long while. The big process of bringing a bunch of engines to 8 studs wide was 
a fun time because I was able to fix a bunch of problems with a bunch of old designs. This did not happen during that process. After all of that was done, I thought to myself, well, you know, the original 8 wide Hogwarts Express design doesn't satisfy me enough. I want to do something more with it. Eventually, I rediscovered the design as shown on the front of the book. And here we are. This is just a fun model, and I love it. And I also love you for watching this video. Thank you all ever so much for tuning in. Consider joining my Discord server to chat with like-minded fans of Nerf and Lego trains. Consider following me on Flickr and on Instagram for some sneak peeks and behind-the-scenes actions of future and current projects. Keep an eye out on my community tab for polls and updates. Thank you all ever so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you all in the next episode. Bye-bye.